Good morning and welcome to lesson 12 of this course on PID control. So as usual before starting the course we will review the instruction objectives and these are firstly that we will be related we will be we will learn how to define the related parameters of PID control in an industrial context. Secondly, we will describe and explain in detail about a phenomenon which uh, many times occurs with PID control known as integrator wind up and the ways of reducing that. We will describe various ways of implementing the derivative control part. We will also describe the uh, one technique of you know bumpless auto manual transfer that is when the uh, control is transferred from auto to manual or manual to auto how, so that it can happen without any shock to the process. And finally, we will describe digital implementations of PID control. So in, in other words, we are going to look at various practical aspects of PID control today. So, let us begin with the PID equation. This is the PID equation which we have seen in the last lesson also, where KP is the proportional gain or sometimes we, uh, this is not proportional band as written, but uh, it is, uh, it is proportional gain. We will, but a very similar parameter called proportional band is also used in the context of PID controllers. We will see soon how it is related to the proportional gain. Next is the parameter Ti, the parameter Ti here which is called the reset time and expressed in a peculiar sounding unit called minutes per repeat. Next is the derivative time, the derivative time here not, not, the, not the time units of minutes, these are uh, rather unusual, it may seem rather unusual, but remember that typical chemical processes have time constant of the order of minutes, so these times are often expressed in minutes. This is as very well known control scientist. <coughs> Carl Johann Astrom says a, a so called textbook version of the PID control equation. As we will see in this, in this lesson that there are various modifications that you have to do to this equation before it can be implemented. So uh, let us first go about defining the various terms. So we first define proportional gain or proportional band. Proportional gain is well known, it is KP which is uh, delta U by delta E or U by E while proportional band this term is new and it is defined in just the inverse way. So proportional band is defined as it is the band of error which in a hundred which uh, causes which, which causes a hundred percent variation in the controller output and generally expressed as a percentage of the range of measurement. So that is the definition. So it is in an inverse way where gain is u by e, here we are defining PV as the band of error which causes a hundred percent variation in the, in the uh, controller output or the manipulated input to the plant, right. So in that sense, it is a, it is the inverse of KP. So look at this, this diagram will clarify matters further. So uh, here look at the controller input and suppose this is the set point, currently the set point is set here, okay. So if the measurement or the output is the measurement or the output could be anywhere in this zone. So, for so it will cause various kinds of error and if you use a proportional band then as the error will increase 
the output will increase. In this case, the, the proportional controller actually has a 50 percent bias, which means that when the error is 0, there is still a 50 percent output, output of the controller. Sorry, this line is getting. So, this is typically set at 50 percent. So, there is a, so the controller output equation is actually given as u is equal to k p into e plus, uh, uh, plus a constant term. So, plus a constant term c and this constant term is actually 50 percent. So, when the e is 0 still you get 50 percent output because otherwise there will always be a steady state error as we have seen in the last lesson. So, what happens is that as the error changes to this side or to this side the, the output decreases or increases and if the error changes from here, from here to here the input to the plant increases from 0 percent to 100 percent. So, this is the band of error which causes the causes an output a, a variation in the controller output from 0 percent to 100 percent and this is the proportional band right. So, look at let us look at an example. So, while k p is delta u by delta e proportional band is defined as 100 percent by k p. So, you can easily find out that this gives the error in percentage which will cause a, 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 a 100 percent input change. Obviously, a narrow k p means a low value of k p implies a high value of k p, uh, a, a narrow p b or a low value of the proportional band implies a high proportional gain right. So, let us look at an example. Suppose, the we are we are we are talking about a temperature control loop where the full scale measurement is 50 degree centigrade right. Suppose, an error of 2 degree centigrade which is 4 percent of 50 degree centigrade causes an input change by 100 percent. So, maybe there is a heat R whose output will change from 0 watt to 5000 watts or 1000 watts or whatever. So, if the error changes by 2 degree centigrade, then the heater output will change from 0 percent to 100 percent. So, in such a case 4 percent change in error causes a 100 percent change in input. So, the proportional band in this case is 4 percent. So, this is the meaning of the proportional band. Now, let us look at the integral gain which is again expressed in terms of the integral time and the proportional band. Now, here uh, uh, I would you might think that why is it why is it that rather than expressing the integral gain rather than expressing the integral gain as k i why I am expressing it as k p into t i why the derivative gain which I could call k d I am I am expressing as k p into t d what is the what is the reason? The reason is that the reason is actually embedded in history. It turns out that in the older you know uh, hydraulic and pneumatic PID controllers the construction of the controller was such that one part of the device used to control k p another part of the device used to control t i another part of the part of the device used to control t d. So, there are certain distinct parts of the controller which used to realize these terms k p t i and t d. So, that an average so that an overall integral gain of k p by t i and an overall derivative gain of k p into t d is realized. So, it is for from that principle that the integral time and the derivative time terms are continuing, but, but if you have a if you if you have a microprocessor based controller then then all these terms need not be considered and you could equivalently work with uh, you know k i and k d. But still let us since I mean uh, see 
since the terminology still continues, so let us see the meanings because K i and K d we understand very well, they are just simply the gain terms. So let us see what is integral time. So integral time is the time taken to repeat the proportional control effort or action for a step error signal. So what happens is that let us this is probably not so clear. So let us look at the let us look at the scenario. So, so now suppose take this as a this is a PI controller right this is a PI control controller. Suppose we are giving a step error signal to it. So here we have a I am sorry so here we have a step input. If you give a step input like this like this to the controller then how will the u output vary? The u output will will vary like this. So immediately the kp part will rise so this will be kp into e and then the integral term will start integrating the error. So it will go up right and after some time after some time this integral part of the input will equal the proportional part of the input. So, the, so <coughs> it turns out that after exactly after T i amount of time the input will become if, if the proportional control input is k p because I have taken the error as unity then after T i amount of time the total input will become 2 k p or the integral part will repeat the proportional part. So, in that sense this definition is now explained that is time taken this time taken to repeat the proportional control effort action for a step error signal okay. And it is given as as we all know it is given as k p by t i the proportional the integral gain is expressed as k p by t i. Now so from this definition perhaps it is now clear why it is expressed as minutes per repeat. So for if the if this continues then every t i minutes the integral term will produce another k p times input right. So, this so the proportional control it will continuously repeat every t i minutes in that sense the unit is minutes per repeat. So, that is the that explains the integral term now we go to the uh, derivative term again we have a derivative gain and we have a derivative time. So, again now the derivative time is the time taken for the proportional term to equal the derivative term for a ramp error signal. So, again a similar thing. So, let us look at the diagram here. So, here now we have a PD controller right. So, in the PD controller if we feed it a ramp signal now let us say a ramp signal of some of some slope e dot some slope e dot then immediately what will be the what will be the, now that now the, now the derivative term will jump because there is a constant e dot. So, there will be immediately a k d into e dot term and the k p term will now start going up because e is going up. So, <coughs> after t d time this is going to be k p e dot into t d. So, if k p e dot into t d has to equal k d into e dot which is the derivative term output then k d equal to k p into t d. So, this is the time this is the time or this is the derivative time after which the proportional action will repeat the derivative action. So, that explains what is the meaning of the term derivative time. Now, we come to the implementation of the PID controller and, and we basically we are trying to see that what are the problems that might occur if you just simply implement the term as a proportional as an in plus integral plus derivative. So, first we look at the integral term in detail and see what happens when there is actuator saturation. Now, you see actuator saturation is actually very common in the sense that uh, only in certain cases see the set point keeps on varying. So, suppose the suppose the set point stays suppose the set point stays uh, 
80 percent of the time it stays in about 60 percent of its maximum value and probably at 5 percent of the time it reaches something like it reaches 100 percent. Now, if you have to make an in an actuator which can really deliver full output even for a 100 percent control input completely proportional then the then the actuator has to be very large and the and the actuator setting has to be I mean the actuator power rating has to be very large. So, often it is it is very common that ok we will we will choose an actuator which can deliver input proportional to the control input for about 70 75 percent and then it will saturate. So, the cases where you will give you will get you are going to give uh, very rare cases sometimes very I mean, exceptional cases maybe you will give more than 75 or 80 percent at that time there will be some error and you are willing to tolerate it. So, this happens in many cases. Now, so we, we want to see what happens to the PID controller in such cases of actuator saturation. So, let us look at this case very carefully. So, you see that suppose the maximum possible output that the actuator can produce is this. So, here it saturates. So, it cannot produce any further output, but a set point is given which is higher than that. So, the actuator naturally cannot give enough input corresponding to this set point. So, what will happen is that the output will rise and then here it will saturate. It cannot, so the output cannot increase beyond this point and this amount of error this amount of error will will in, will exist this is the steady state error which will exist one cannot do anything about it simply because whatever control you apply the actuator will not be able to give input so the plant input will not increase beyond this that's fine now suppose the set point is reduced here it is you have realized that it cannot reach that set point so it is reduced so immediately now now this output level this output level is very much reachable by the actuator. So, what is desirable is that the actuator will immediately because by control action the output will come down and will reach a 0 steady state error point as is common under uh, under integral control, but exactly that does not happen. Why it does not happen? Now, suppose that you have held this error you have not immediately reduced it, but you have continued with it for some time. So, now what is happening here during this time the pro the error is constant the error is constant. So, the proportional term so the proportional uh, part of the control input remains constant, but the integral term of the control input goes on increasing. So, the integral in the PID controller goes on integrating the error. However, it cannot produce a control input because the actual that input is given. So, the as if the PID controller output is the controller output is continuously increasing it is also coming to the actuator input, but the actuator is not able to give that output because it is already saturated. Now, suppose that after some time the the control input is now reduced. Now, what is going to happen? What will be observed is that the while the while it, it would have been desirable that the control input immediately falls down and reaches as reaches the desired steady state point it does not do that rather it continues at the same level ignoring that the that the that the set point has now been reduced and only after some time only after some time does the actuator does the control start to respond to the state to the set point now, this phenomenon is called integrator wind up. Basically, what has happened is that the integrator has become bloated or floated. So, it has not realized that, that the plant cannot reach this output. So, the error is, is will persist. So, it is unnecessarily trying to give more and more control input and getting blown up right. So, that is integrator wind up and it happens essentially because of the fact that see during the, during the time when the error is persisting say from this point 
the error is persisting. So, the proportional input is remaining constant, but the, but the integral input is, is growing. So, suppose at this time it has reached this value, now the set point is reduced. So, it is at this point that the set point is reduced. Now, what is going to happen and, and this is the saturated output. So, the integral is way beyond the saturated level. So, now that it is the set point is reduced, now the error has become negative. So, the integral value is now reducing, but still it is positive. See at this point, at this point the control input is still greater than the saturated level. So, what goes is actually this level and therefore, the output persists. So, only at this time after so much time does it come to the below the saturated input level and then it goes further below. So, the, so, from this point onward the output will start reducing. So, this is what happens. So, this is so the whole idea is that the integral should not be allowed to blow up and continuously blow up with time if the if the uh, oh sorry if the error persists due to a phenomenon like actuator saturation. So, this, so, that is precisely that can be done in many ways and uh, here is here is uh, one here is the scheme one scheme one of many possible schemes which will realize that. So, how do we do that? So, look at this controller simple controller we have we have the usual p d the the derivative term which you can ignore for the time for the time being it is not concerned. So, we have a proportional term which is coming we also have a derivative term which is coming which we did not consider in, in this slide. So, what is happening here is that here actually it is here suppose this is the actuator right. So, the actuator has a saturation characteristic. So, even if this is the controller output and this is the plant input in between sits the actuator. So, what you are doing is you are actually sensing the physical plant input. You could either do that or you could have an have, have a model of the actuator in the controller itself and check before giving the input check whether this is really going to cross the actuator limit. So, you can either do it in software or you can use a sensor to again see what uh, input is going. Now, when v becomes larger than u then you are sub and then, then this actuation error becomes negative. Now, what you want to do is now you, you take this actuation error and you feed it. So, here a negative term is coming and here error is positive. So, through the PID integral term a positive term is coming. So, you have to define this gain in a suitable manner such that whenever v this becomes negative this signal becomes 0 this signal becomes 0. So, when this signal becomes 0 this integrator does not build up. So, this integrator output remains at constant value. So, you see that whenever you you are giving an input which is going to cause an actuator saturation the this but special path which we have added to the PID controller will now prevent will now prevent the integral term from blowing up. So, that when the set point is reduced the plant output will follow very smoothly. Right. So, this is the scheme this is one of the schemes which can be used for anti reset wind up sometimes integral wind up is also called reset wind up. So, uh, coming to the next one now as I was telling that PID controllers uh, were historically many of them were made if using hydraulic and pneumatic devices. So, they used to have you know certain realization structures. So, this is a typical structure where you know as I as I said that you know one part one part of the controller used to be realize used to realize the gain typically you know devices like flapper nozzles which we will see and there are there are various kinds of you know bellows or orifices constrictions which are used to to realize these these time constants. So, the controller structure look at this structure. So, if you realize this for the time being let us forget about this one assume that it is it goes directly it is 1. So, if you take this structure then you will find that uh, 
you will find that what is the if you compute the transfer function between u and v if you compute the transfer function between u and v first of all note that there is that is uh, k i is, is realized as k p by t i. So, there is interaction this is called an interactive mode because if you change the proportional gain k p then the integral gain k i also changes. So, whenever you change k p if you want to keep the integral gain constant you have to also change t i. So, the various parameters cannot be varied in a non interactive mode, but they must they will be interacting. Okay. And the transfer function between v and u ignoring the limiter, this is a limiter that is if, if the value goes beyond a certain value it will limit it, if it goes below a certain value it will also limit it. So, if you ignore the limiter for the time being then you will find that the transfer function between u and v is given as 1 plus 1 by S T i. So, when you multiply it by k p you get the transfer function of a p i controller. Okay. So, uh, you can also see so so basically what you have realized is the same transfer function that is kp into 1 plus 1 by s ti but you have realized it in this way now if you now let us look at the role of the limiter which is also used in this structure to avoid integral wind up so you see that if there is if there is uh, if there is if u goes too high this is actually going to the actuator this is the controller output which is going to the actuator. So, if this u goes to goes very high then what is going to happen is that this limiter which is inside the controller itself is going to is going to limit this. So, this u will become constant. So, when this u becomes constant you can see you, this, is a, this is a simple first order transfer function. So, at that point of time this input will also be constant. So, now what is happening is that the error is the error is constant. So, therefore, this this v is constant and because this u has gone to a high level. So, even at some level depending on the where you have set the limiter this is also constant. So, therefore, u becomes constant. So, the output of the p i controller does not build up indefinitely, but gets limited. So, this is another way by which uh, uh, an anti reset wind up scheme can be implemented typically in hydraulic and pneumatic controls.